Pray. Have you been blessed thus far? Amen. Now, don't fool me now. Have you been blessed this far? Amen. Amen. God is good. God is awesome. We talked about last year that, that, that need of worship as we're staying the course. And we're not letting go and, 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 and we're enduring that we're going to find moments and space in our life to just simply worship God. He deserves our worship and worship opens up so many amazing things in our life that no, nothing else will open up. I want to say one more thing here. So we'll be back to our regular times next Sunday. That's 8 o'clock, 9.45, and uh, 11.30. It's it been so long, right? Uh, 8 o'clock, uh, 9.45, and 11.30. We'll be back to our regular times next Sunday, 8 o'clock, 9.45, and 11.30. And let the church say amen. Okay, 8 o'clock. 945. I gotta remind myself now. 8 o'clock, 945, and 11 30. We'll be back to our original service times. It just again, we're just gonna talk about today believing God for more in 2024. Believing God for more in 2024. And again, as we've already shared with you at the beginning of the message, this is not meant to be some cute message, some rhyming message. Uh, hence the reason why it's just not gonna be simply expecting God to give us grace and favor but also those parts that is necessary to facilitate the favor that we want to come and experience and manifest in our life. Did we get a second microphone uh, for Pastor T? Are you going to speak? You're not. Why you not? Because you got it. But how you know I got it? I just know you do. Did the Lord tell you that? Yes. The Lord told you that. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure. That, no, you want me to do it by myself? Are you sure? Okay, well, then I mean, you speaking next week too then. Okay. She's putting all this pressure on me up in here. I was going to depend on her today. I did all mine in prayer. Come on, somebody. Uh, Pastor T, you could give her and say, go speak, and she'll need no preparation. And she'll come out with a sermon in two minutes. It'd take me about a week or two to prepare. Come on, somebody. I've been working on this message here for the past month. <laughs> I tell her, I, I need you to speak for me. She needs five minutes. You go in the closet, come back, and the Lord gave a whole word. Verses, scriptures, points, and watch this here. More than 45 minutes worth. Okay, that, that's how she wrote you. Right, Pastor Deborah. But we're believing God for more in 2024. How's Courtney doing? She's okay? Okay, is that on your mind? Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm praying, y'all. Extend your hand to Pastor T. She's praying for her baby girl at the house. Courtney had a fever last night. So it's all on her mind. Father, Father, I just pray right now that, God, you just guard her heart and mind that Courtney is well. Uh, she's well taken care of, God, and her body is being healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for this mother's mind, the heart of a mother, God, that, God, you will comfort her and give her strength and let her know that it is well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah, you was tossing and turning out last night. Yeah, so, okay, no problem. I get it. Now it's making sense. I'm, I'm trying to make sense of this. I'm like, Lord, you ain't warned me of this here. And it's like he's saying, you, you should have saw it coming last night. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you're right, the, the, the year more. So Luke 12, verses 48 is a verse I really want to focus on. And I've already read what I read to you from the book of Isaiah that I believe the Lord just gave us that in real time on this morning, but when we look at the overall chapter of Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, it is literally a chapter of not just encouragement, but it's also a chapter of warning, and I believe that's even a picture of the word that he's given us for 2024, this word of the year of more. It, it's, it is as much of a word of encouragement as it is a word of warning. Okay, it's almost like a coin that um, there's two sides of the coin. There's a heads and a tail. And so when we see this word more, it's easy for us to say, yes, God, give me more money. Give me more peace. Give me more joy. Give me more clients. Give me more sales. It's, it, it's easy for us to ask for the more of that. But when you flip the coin over, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with more. 
And so he says in Luke chapter um, 12 at that last verse, he's going to say, to whom much is given, much more is required. I find it interesting when we look at Luke chapter 12, it is really a parable that's taking place in this story here. And Jesus is trying to explain a bigger point to them about the kingdom. And this entire chapter or the point that he's trying to make is really about stewardship how to have proper stewardship in your life, how to manage and be faithful over what he has given to you. And for some of you, that stewardship could be in the area of your finances. It could be in this area of your calling, your talents, your gifts, whatever the specificity of the things that God has placed in your hands to do, we must be found faithful with that because if we're not faithful with the little, he will not make us ruler over much more. And so when we say we want more, we have to understand that what comes with the word more in 2024. Even for us as for a church, we know we need more space. We know we need more land. We know we need a bigger building. So it's easy to declare that and proclaim more, but do we know what's on the other side of that request? There's much more responsibility that comes with that. I see realtors in our church. There's bankers in our church. I see doctors in our church, lawyers in our, There's people from business owners in our church right now. And when you ask for God for more in the sphere of your influence or your sphere of purpose, you have to always remember what else come with that more. You ask for more employees. When you ask for more employees and and you get 20 more employees, you don't just get employees that work for your company, their personality comes with them as well. And a lot of their isms and schisms come right into the company. And woe unto us as a church if you don't think that doesn't happen in the church as well, that God gives us more people and more responsibility. People come with problems. And watch us here. Many times, many of them come in with those problems because they went everywhere else looking for help. And it's our responsibility, our hope is to give them the help that they are looking for. So we pray for more people, but we also have to remember more people comes with more responsibility. It comes with more pressure, more, more pains. And look what it says here, just for reading purposes and understanding purposes. I kind of want to read through um, Luke chapter 12 to get to that one verse right at the end of verse 48. It says, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. He says, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. He says, it would be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. He says, it would be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he, watch this, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. In other words, managing stewardship, even if you don't know the time or the day, not just when Jesus returns, but easy, even when you're waiting for your spouse. Even when you're waiting for God to bring the right man or the right woman into your life, the question is, how am I waiting? Are you waiting, expecting them to come? Because some of you revealed to me that you're not waiting for them to come. Because when I see you in Walmart or Publix on aisle three with a bonnet on your head, there's no way you're waiting for a man to come in your life. He going to rock right past you. And I know you believe in the lie. What, what God has for me, it is for me. And nobody can tell. That is a fallacy. That is a lie. There's a lot of things that God has for you. That if you're not prepared for it, a passion. Some of you got a house that belongs for you. You're going to miss it because you don't want to do the work of getting your credit together or saving your money. He does have something more for you. But are you willing to put in the work? Yeah, we say what God has for me, it is for me. It is for me if I'm willing to put in the work. I'm willing to do what I need to do. I'm willing to be ready when he shows up, when the person shows up, when the opportunity shows up. One verse in Ecclesiastes tells us time and chance happens to them all. In other words, all of us get a time and chance, apart from being handicapped, apart from somebody physically harming someone and abusing someone, apart from those particular issues like that, and a couple more. We, uh, time and chance will happen to each and every one of us to fulfill something great in the earth. And the question is, what do I do with that time and chance? 
It's, he's saying to us here how we can be a good steward and how we can be a good manager, and he's likening it to a couple of things. Back to verse 42, the Lord answered. He says here, and actually let's go to 40, you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. I, I just love that there. And Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or are you telling this to everyone? The Lord answered and said, who the, he, he said, question, who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food and allowance at the proper time? He says, it will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. I'm tired of waiting for my breakthrough. I'm tired of waiting for my Boaz. I'm tired of waiting for my Ruth. So we get weary in well-doing. So we don't faint. So, so we don't reap because we fainted. We, we know it says that we shall reap if we faint not, but what if you've already fainted? You're not going to reap what he has for you. Some of you have already fainted and you won't get the reaping. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect and at an hour he does not aware of or that he's not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. You know, we don't use words like, we practice no more today. You know, words like repent. I just cussed just now. Re re repent. Turn around. Don't do that again. Stop talking to her like that. Stop talking to him like that. We, we don't use those words in the church anymore because they are offensive. They, 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 they hold us accountable. When you ab abstain from words like that, you rob yourself of the discipline that God is trying to bring in your life. But we think that when you get a pastor or you go to a church and they only tell you what you want to hear, that's the best church in the community. I just want to tell somebody you're not in that kind of church. We're going to tell you the truth and nothing but the whole truth, so help you. Thank you for that one clap over there away in the far corner. And as y'all heard me say many times, you shall know, that the scripture said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But what if I don't know the truth? Then I cannot be set free. Come on. It, it, and this applies to almost anything in life. If you don't know the truth about home ownership, then you won't be free to own. Some of us has a poor understanding of what it means to own a home and own your stuff. When you don't know the truth about a matter, when you don't know the truth about entrepreneurship, when you don't know the truth about Jesus Christ, then you are in bondage. He says you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Anybody want freedom in 2024? emotional freedom, physical freedom, spiritual freedom. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Last part. He says, uh, uh, um, uh, the servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. In other words, it, again, it, this is, he's given a picture. It's, it, it's a parable, a met, trying to explain a higher purpose wise about how does it relate to stewardship and being faithful to the stuff that what God places in your hand. When well, you're not faithful with the gifts and the call and the talents and the resources in your hand, you're going to somehow one way lose it. You're going to, anybody that seems like, man, every time I get some money, it's like it, it goes in one pocket and out the next. It's like all the money coming in, but it's going out 20 other ways. God has a way of blowing on your life. where it, Or God has a way of allowing life to blow on your life and cause it to scatter. See, you don't want God to blow on your stuff. You want him to breathe on your stuff. 
blowing on it causes things to scatter. Go book, read the book of Haggai. God will cause everything to scatter in your life. But when God breathes on what you have, he breathes life on it. He makes sure it expands. He makes sure that it increases. And that's what he wants to do more of in 2024. Come on, somebody. God wants to breathe on more of your stuff this year versus allowing the work of the enemy to blow and cause things in your life to scatter. He says, but the one who does not know and does things deserving of punishment will be beaten with few blows. Look at the parable here. It's almost like you, who was that person that says, when you know better, Maya Angelou, was that who said it, Ross? When you know better, you do better. It's like at one point he says here, if you knew what time a thief would show up at your house, you would be prepared to deal with that thief. You, 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 you wouldn't be shocked. God is saying, position yourself in such a way, be discerning enough in 2024 that you don't have to be shocked by a lot of things in this upcoming year. And when you steward your life right, when you steward your relationships right, when you steward the people in your circle right, when you've got a level of discernment and understanding about the relationships in your space, you don't have to be shocked by a lot of stuff that happens in the upcoming year. Matter of fact, you can curate your life in such a way where you can guarantee certain things will happen. The seeds that you sow right now in your spirit or whatever your spirit is, it can set you up for all the greatness you desire in the years ahead. If you believe that, give God a praise. He says, but the one who does not know and does these things deserving of punishment will be beaten with few blows. Does life feel that way sometimes? Like it just, just uh, out of nowhere, life just dishes you blows and nothing begins to work and nothing is coming together. He says here, from everyone... Who has been given much, and this is my focus verse here, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked of him. If you ever go get surgery done, and let's say, for example, someone's going to get heart surgery, and you may have a doctor right there, and you have a nurse right there, and they're both are going to be working on you together tirelessly. But one of them is getting paid much more money than the other. And the nurse can't say to the doctor, why are you getting paid more money than me? To whom much is given, much more is free. He or she put in the time and the work to get a certain understanding, a certain skill set to know how to effectively what? Do heart surgery. To, to, to whom much is given, much is re. You want to serve in ministry, you want to teach, you want to preach. The requirements is different than the person who's ushering at the door. To whom much is given, much more is required. I know we're in a day right now where you just show up and you just say, put me on the highest place. To whom much given, much is required. You're getting mighty quiet right now because we're desiring lofty places and lofty things and great aspirations. But are we willing to do the more that's necessary to position us and to qualify us for those things? And then we say dumb stuff like, oh, they just hating on me. No, boo-boo. There's a standard. <laughs> There's a step to this thing. And my wife, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm not proud to say, but I'm okay with saying it because I'm not embarrassed by it. And, uh, I don't have a degree. My wife has a master's degree. Now, let's be clear. My wife can say some stuff, break some stuff down. I couldn't even pay to break down. It, 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 it is because when you get a master's degree, that means you have disciplined yourself in such a way to become a master in something specific. So she, she got her own race, her own lane on some of that mastery stuff-wise. Then somebody show up in the same, got the same desire, want to do what she do, but don't have that degree. You make it still teach, but that's a level, that's a cut in the edge that she would have, that she has only because she paid her dues. She invested the time, she invested the energy it's not that she, it, that is now that she's better than me. Come on, it's she's positioned herself. Because even in, in the right context, the nurse isn't better than the doctor, and the doctor's not better than the nurse because the, that doctor needs that nurse. You let that nurse walk out on him. 
<laughs> you let that nurse walk out on that doctor while he's doing surgery. Now, she may walk out for one or two minutes that they schedule. And but you say, Doc, I'll see you later. I'm going to eat lunch. This surgery is eight hours too long for me. I'll catch you halfway through. That patient ain't going to make it. Come on, somebody. So that doctor and that nurse are very important, but to whom much is given based on the gifts and the talents that God has placed on the inside of you, much more will be required. My leadership, my, our staff here, I require things from them that I don't require from the dream team. I'll say this here. There's things I don't require from the volunteers here at Hope City that I require from the dream team leaders. There's things I don't require from the dream team leaders that I require from the staff. There's things that I don't require from the staff that I require from the ministers. As the level goes up, the expectations and the requirements, they increase. Are you with me on today? To whom much is given, much more is required. And I believe in 2024, I'm almost done here, as God is going to elevate many of you in your spirit of purpose, whether it's education, whether it's politics, whether it's religion, whether it's business, whether it's entertainment, these five specific things here, I believe is going to benefit you in 2024. Look what it says here, or here's one right here. Number one, as I said before, I believe that God is going to set you up for more in 2024. But if that's going to happen in 2024, we would need more grace. We'll, we would need God's grace. Watch this here. We're going to need God's grace, and we're going to need to be willing to extend grace. Let me say that one more time. We would need God's grace, and we would need to be able to extend grace. In 2024, in this upcoming year, watch this here, we are all expecting certain things to happen that we're welcoming to happen to us. Big things, big breakthroughs, new clients, new, new this, new that, a new marriage, a new job, a new house. We're expecting this here. But each year also brings with it an element of the unexpected. Failures, disappointments, and shortcomings. Watch this here, wrongs and being wrong. We will need grace, and sometimes you will need to have to extend grace. We all want grace, but there are some times that we've done the wrong, and we need someone to extend it to us, and we need to extend that grace. Look what Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. It says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. In 2024, God has given us more grace. It, it, this is not grace coming to cause you to just cover over your mistakes and your sins. He is saying to us is that I'm going to extend grace to you in 2024 because you're going to constantly become or come before my throne of grace. You're going to constantly be in my presence. This is for people who's going to be looking to be in the presence of God. And when you leave out of the presence of God and you do life and life, this just it blows your way. Somebody walks out on your marriage, whatever. Whatever the specificity of it may be, God is saying to you, my grace will be there for you. Resources that you thought you were going to get, alone you was hoping to go through and the long it shuts in your face. God is saying to you, faithful person, my grace will be sufficient for you in your time of need. It's going to be a year of more grace. Number two, here's the second thing, wisdom. We would need more than information. We would need the wisdom of God in this upcoming year. We, 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 we need that, as I would say, wisdom is the mind of God migrated down to the mind of man. We, we want the wisdom of God in every um, critical decision, every important decision that we make in this year. Don't bother God about whether you should get the red dress or the black dress. Just which one do you want? It just ain't that deep. Come on, somebody. God, should I get the red dress or the white dress? God would say, which one do you like? We, 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 don't, don't, don't waste the wisdom of God on stuff that is like he's saying to you. It, it's like a husband saying to a wife, hey, honey, here's the credit card. Just go. <laughs> Pastor Deborah said, hmm. Like, honey, take the credit card. 
go do what you want to do for today. Go enjoy yourself. Now, you, but you stand there and say, it, can I spend a thousand or can I spend two thousand? The manager said, take the card and go do what you want to do for the rest of the day. In other words, exceedingly, abundantly, above all, <laughs> you ask her. <laughs> Sometimes we ask God questions on stuff that the answer is already in front of us. But there are going to be some things that will manifest and some decisions that we have to make in 2024 where it won't be as clear. And we're going to need a mind of God. God, how do I move in this? God, how do I stand in this here? James 1, 1, 5 said, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting my brother and counted all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, watch this here, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Look at the last verse here. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, somebody say wisdom. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that will give to all men freely, liberally, and he will not be angry at you for asking him for wisdom. God, I don't know how to deal with this situation. God, I don't know whether to go left or to go right. God, I need your wisdom. Proverbs 23 or Proverbs 24 verse 3 says, through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Seek the wisdom of God. More wisdom in 2024. Number three, oh, my favorite, accountability. The year, he's going to get, this year demands that you have more accountability. Is Think about whether you're a, a person who manages finances. It, 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 no, I go further than that. Someone who's building a new bridge, and there has to be a lot of integrity in that bridge to guarantee that when people get on that bridge, it is guaranteed that they're going to make it from one side to the other. The engineers who built those bridges, they're Constant verification, constant verification. They are constantly evaluating the integrity of that bridge. Everyone is being held accountable to their part in the building of that bridge. Why? Because people's lives are at stake every time they cross that bridge. And I'm telling you, some of the decisions and the things that you're going to be doing in 2024 is going to demand accountability. Why? Because people's lives are at stake. People's resources are at stake. People's Dreams are at stake. Accountability is necessary in 2024. You need to be accountable. Watch this here in your marriage as well in 2024. Accountable in your friendships in 2024 if you're going to experience the grace and the wisdom that God wants to bring in your life. There's a story over in Joshua chapter 6 where God promised Joshua he was giving him some land, giving them some land. Joshua, wherever the soles of your feet will tread upon that will I give unto you. And God said to Joshua, one particular land, um, it was going to belong to him. One city was going to belong to him. Jericho was going to belong to God. And he said, do not touch anything in that city. Every other city, you can have everything in it. But this one city, I'm going to hold you accountable. Do not touch it, you or the people that's with you. And look what it says in Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. He says, but keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of that. In 2024, stay away from the things that God says or, or handle the right way the devoted things in your life. Handle your prayer life right. Handle your spiritual life right. Handle your time with God right. Those devoted things in your life that belongs to God. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of that. Otherwise, accountability, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble 
on it. We, we, men, we must be accountable for our actions, how we talk to our spouses, how we talk to our, ch our children. Wives, we have to be accountable to how you talk to your husbands. And single women, single men, you have to be accountable for your body parts while you're waiting on your Boaz and your Ruth. In the church, say amen. Because God, more, 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 God, more money, more this here. And God said, I was going to bring it to you, but you touched the unclean thing. You, 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 you bothered some stuff, and now you done frustrated the purposes of God for your life. And now you think everything is a devil. No, boo, you did that one there. You did that one there. In 2020, 2024, stop blaming the devil for everything. Two, two things I hope some of y'all kill in 2024. Stop saying God said everything. Because some of this stuff God is not saying. No, God said, God, God said, this is okay to say, I believe, I think. You know, I'm wondering if I should be. But everything is not, every, everything, every, everything, God, God told you that for real. And he skipped right past telling you to stop cussing. He didn't tell you nothing about you cussing. He never asked you, he never, you never heard him say, stop cussing. A stop being mean, or a stop lying, or a stop hitting your spouse. Come on, talk to your spouse. You never hear him say none of that, but you heard him say, lead the church. You ain't hear him say, tell the truth about what really happened, but you heard him say that, that articulate. You ain't hear him say nothing about deal with their attitude. You hear him say nothing about the way you just said that to them that was wrong. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's for those who desire to be on the leadership here at Hope City. It, it, just have a meeting with either Rodrigo or Nikisha. Um, and I just give one quick example real fast in real time on accountability and correction because I don't, uh, we don't play. We, 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 we work. Uh, if, if, if you think this church is just growing because we're just sitting around doing nothing, no, there's work happening and it's a lot of stuff that could, that could drive us crazy, but we're working wild. But it was one particular Sunday morning, um, and I think, and I think they, they both happened on the same day. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, yeah, with yours. And so I'm standing talking to somebody. Can I tell a story? No, I can't tell it. I, well, I asked my wife that. I ain't got to ask you. I'm, I'm just going to tell a story here. It's, it's, it's my story in, anyway. Yeah, it's like I got to ask her, not you. So... <laughs> So, Rodriguez, my, uh, my executive, said, can, can y'all just give her a hand clap for staying, just for staying sane in 2023? Uh, uh, and y'all got to understand, I got a lot in my life going on, and she helped keep the wheels on the train track in my life, and it's not always easy. And some stuff that she got to say is not because she said it, it's because I said it. She just a messenger. They end up getting mad at her and leaving the church. That's something I actually said. She just a messenger. <laughs> you can't meet with Pastor Corey until six weeks. Why? Because uh, he can't meet with you. He's, he has to send somebody five times every day for the next, next 40 days. I, I can't make room. For, I got another minister who will see you. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see her. I want to see him. See, this is stuff people don't know about. But I wish I could tell them more about it. But God won't let me tell them more because then he's going to rebuke me and correct me. And put me in order. Okay, so let me stay on topic right now. So as I hasten to close out real fast, I remember one Sunday, um, uh, we were out in the hallway talking. I was talking to somebody. And we were just talking. It was, about, it was me, me and Pastor David was there. As a matter of fact, it was all leaders were there. And I was talking to somebody. And she came up and tapped me on my shoulder. I looked back. And I turned back around and I just kept talking. And, and I'm talking. She said, she said, I don't like to wait. I turned around. I said, you going to wait today? <laughs> and I turned back around, and I kept talking. And then later on that day, we was outside. We were talking. I said, hey, how do you think that person would have felt if I'm in a conversation with them, and they, it, 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 you came up behind me and basically said what they're saying doesn't matter? This, this, this is how they grow, because we're... Their face, I'm helping.
some growth. We hit real. It is not no patty caking around when you walk in with me. On Nikisha, when she was sending emails out on behalf of me, her, she came from corporate America making six figures, and she started working for the church. And I saw some of her emails going out. I'm like, oh, my God, that email is so cut. She, like, she would just, hmm. I said, hey, hey, do me a favor. Before you send another email, send me the email first and let me review it first. Because I said, your tone is a little bit too sharp for people who's volunteering. <laughs> These people ain't getting paid right here. <laughs> they are volunteering. And you cut their necks off like, ka, 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 like Bruce Lee. Ka. <laughs> and so for about maybe about four, five, six months, she'll send me her emails. I look at them and say, good, cool, cool, cool. I'm like, ah, that sentence was kind of, it may be fine, but kind of tweak that just a little bit as well. And it got to a point where the email, I say, you know what? You got this here. What if she was not willing to be held accountable and to be coached at? I mean, God's doing some amazing things in her life right now. She didn't run from that. She ran into it. And I don't even think at that point she was full, full time. Now she's full time. But she wouldn't have got that if she would have rebelled to what God. That wasn't me doing that. That was God really doing that through me to prepare her for something she did not even see coming. <laughs> Accountability is important for us in 2024. Discipline. It creates responsible behavior and self-control. There's a reason why we discipline our children, because we're trying to create responsible behavior and self-control. Appropriate and consistent discipline teaches us about consequences and taking responsibility. If there is no discipline taken in your life, then we'll keep on doing the same thing over and over and over again. The ultimate outcome of discipline is the ability, watch this, I love this here, is the ability to manage both our feelings and our behaviors. Okay, when you're a person who don't mind being disciplined and corrected, what's happening in your life, you are developing something that's allowing you to control and manage your feelings and your behavior. 1 Corinthians 9, 27 says, no, I strike a blow to my body. This is Paul talking about how he buffed his body. He says, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself would not be disqualified for the prize. Paul says, like a boxer who's in training, he said, I discipline my body. I keep it under control so after I have ministered to other people, I don't find myself coming disqualified for it. I was speaking to Pastor David in the office, and he said, for those who don't know, he's a coach, a head coach over at the college, and he was mentioning how Usain Bolt, he, he said he spent four years training for nine seconds. Four years training for a nine-second race that made him who he is today. If you're not willing to be disciplined, to be placed in a space, in an environment that's going to stretch you and challenge you, that sometimes seem like people are fighting against you, is oftentimes the environment that God is using to stretch you and to develop you. Are you with me on today? And the last one, then we're finished. I'm done. Number five. I don't know about you, but I want to see God's favor in my life. Let me ask you a question. Have you, have you ever had to ask for a favor for somebody, and they extended that favor to you? <laughs> Come on. I mean, anybody ever need a favor? Come on. <laughs> Brandon, did you ever need a favor from maybe you were selling a house, and <sighs> you needed some information a little bit faster than they were moving? And you ask about, you know, girl, man, can you do me a favor? Anybody ever been there before? And watch this here. And they gave you the favor? How did it make you feel after you got that favor? <laughs> it probably made you feel good. It, it, that favor probably allowed you to do something you could not do before the favor was extended. See, before they extended the favor to you, that certain things may would not have worked out in your favor. But because someone extended you favor in that particular thing, it opened up the door for something for you you would not have otherwise received if you did not have the favor. Now think about God extending favor to you in 2024. 
Somebody should say, God, let me ask you a favor. <laughs> In 2024, you should walk around every time you need something. God, can I ask you a favor? God, can I ask you a favor? And watch this here. There's no good thing he will withhold from them who will diligently seek his faith. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or see begging for bread. I close by giving you Luke chapter 2, verse number 52. It says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and he was in favor with both God and with man. I don't know about you. In 2024, I want to be in favor with not just with God, but even with man. See, God is my, see, man is not my source. God is my source. Man is just a resource that God's sources get through. And so it's God, I, I, I just need your favor in 2024 so that I can accomplish all that you've called me and desired me to do. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for speaking to our hearts.